Hello beautiful people, I'm Rish Phoenix and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you guys mindset changes that I've made to live a better and healthier life. If you guys haven't already, go ahead and click the subscribe button and click the bell so you can get notified every time I upload a new video. So one of the things I've been doing recently is I've been actively taking the time to stop focusing on things that either annoy me or things that people do that annoy me. Um, of course this is a lot of work because I'm sure we all have our pet peeves and we all have our triggers, but the reason why I've been taking this step in my life is because when you have a specific trigger that you've had your entire life, I think it's easy to kind of get caught up in always getting annoyed by that thing. And the reason why I've made a decision to stop doing that is because it doesn't serve me in a positive way. I think when you have triggers that really bring you to a level where you're like really annoyed or bring you to a level where it's hard to function, you're kind of giving that trigger the ability to kind of control your life. And I have... I have so much that I'm working on right now. Um, I have so many things that I'm trying to maintain. Um, I just have so many things that I'd rather be focusing my attention on and there comes a point when you really just gotta be like, my entire life this thing has been pissing me off or my entire life I've allowed this thing to kind of get me to a point where I get so annoyed and I can't even function and it's not worth it. Like it's not worth allowing something like that to bother you to that extent. So what I've been doing is whenever a trigger happens or a pet peeve happens, instead of thinking about that trigger, or even if I find myself already thinking about it, what I'll do is I'll take the time to stop thinking about it, like literally just focus on something on the pr in the present moment. So for example, like, I don't know if you guys can hear it right now, if it's picking up on the audio, but I hear an airplane in the sky. So once I have whatever crazy, annoying, like upset, um, upsetting, uh, thought process, I'll stop myself from thinking and I'll focus on something in the present moment. So whatever is happening right now that I can focus my attention on, I'll focus my attention on that. Even if it may be something as simple as breathing, um, assessing what, like anything that you can do, anything. So pretty much you want to use any of your five senses to really bring yourself into the present moment. And the second you get yourself in the present moment, what I like to do from there is focus on the things I actually want in my life. So how do I word this? So let's say if I'm in my room, I'm working on my laptop and then the trigger happens and I start to get annoyed about it and I stop working on my laptop. So I instantly try to catch myself having that thought process. I stop it immediately by using one of my five senses to focus on something in the present moment. And then from there, I think of the next thing I want to do. If the next thing I want to do ends up being working on my laptop still, I'll do that. If the next thing is getting food, I'll do that. The point is to not think about why it pisses you off or think about what you wish happened instead or like literally just don't think about it because literally that is when you're giving energy to your ego and the way I assess that I'm giving energy to my ego is if I feel like I have to prove or defend something. So if I'm in a situation where I feel like I have to prove or defend, I'm giving energy to my ego and I don't want to do that because the ego has a way of never being fulfilled, ever being fulfilled and on top of that it's giving you a false sense of self. And if you put yourself in a position where you're not giving energy to the ego, you just know and you're grounded and you're never putting yourself in a position where you feel like you have to prove or defend yourself. Like, it's just not worth it. So that's the point of focusing on something else that you really want in your life. So if you're thinking about a movie you're about to go see with your friends tomorrow, or let's say if you... If you know there's a movie you're about to go see with your friend tomorrow, think about that instead. If you know that you're looking forward to going to the store to buy something, think about that. Whatever you can personally think about in terms of something that you're actually excited about in your life, think about that instead because 
the more you give energy to something, the more it exists in your world. And if you don't want these triggers to keep affecting you, the best thing to do is to direct your attention somewhere else. Another thing I've been doing is focusing on getting better at my craft. So for me personally, I'm an artist, I'm a digital artist, and when Inktober happened, and I've shared this in a previous video if you guys haven't seen it yet, so when Inktober happened, I got like... When Inktober happened, I kind of fell in love with traditional drawing again, and it kind of put me in a space where I was creating art to create, and not really focusing on deadlines or focusing on getting it done for something. It just put me in a really positive headspace with my art and it didn't feel... I didn't feel as much pressure to finish as I usually do with my other pieces. So with Inktober, it really made me realize that there's things as an artist that I want to improve on. I think it's so easy, or at least for me, it's so easy to kind of focus on getting a piece done, focus on an idea that comes to my head and just doing it. And of course, naturally, I was becoming a better artist, but at the same time, I wasn't really thinking about the things that I have difficulty with as an artist, like drawing backgrounds in terms of having a character actually look like they're physically in the space. And sometimes I even have trouble with my color palette. I love saturated bold colors, but sometimes I get so caught up in all of the colors that I love that I'm not thinking about how all of the colors I'm picking in the piece will actually work together. And I had to take a moment to really realize that I have, I have an opportunity for growth as an artist. I have an opportunity for growth in my craft. and to really start focusing on that and not think about get this done for a specific thing, but to really focus on getting it done to become a better artist, become a better version of whatever I really want to do. And with that being said, it also made me want to focus on getting better at doing makeup and getting better at my photography skills and getting better at editing my photos. Um, it just made me realize how many things I could be focusing my attention on in terms of just becoming a better artist as opposed to just getting something done as an artist, which kind of goes into my next point. I can get inspired by somebody walking down the street with a scarf. I can get inspired by the way the sky looks at night. I can get inspired by so many different things. And with that, I end up kind of making more drafts for my artwork than I have a finished product. And that made me realize that that's something I need to change. I think that it's so easy for me to get caught up in having an idea in my head and just wanting to get it on the page so I don't forget it, but then I realized that I was putting out less into the world than I was just creating drafts, if that makes sense. And that's something I want to change. I want to make sure when I start something, I actually finish it. I don't think there's an issue with me specifically creating drafts and putting ideas down on the page, but I do think that there's an issue when I have 10 drawings that I've created a draft for but only finished one in the entire year. Yeah, I want to work on that. And this is something that definitely applies to anybody who's building a brand or just starting their business. I think it's very important to focus on doing what you love instead of making money. So it's important to recognize that money is energy, meaning Instead of thinking of how you can make a million dollars, think about how you can serve a million people. Think about all of the celebrities that you know that have a bunch of money and think about how many people in the world know about those people. If you ask me, I don't know anybody who has made a fortune by not being known. I'm pretty sure, regardless of if you know them or not, if there's anybody who is in a position in which they're bringing in a lot of money in their life, it's most likely because they're serving a million people or they're helping a bunch of people. So what I had to recognize in myself in terms of applying that to what I'm doing, I have to focus more on just doing what I love. 
creating the artwork and not thinking about making the artwork sell. Of course I want to make a living from doing what I love, but at the same time, if I keep focusing on the money instead of my craft, it's going to show in my artwork. I know when I create a piece that I love because I feel a connection to it. And that's what really makes it shine and I'm pretty sure that's what's really going to attract customers to even want to purchase it. And even as an artist, that's something I'm really tough on myself about because I never want to put something out in the world for somebody to purchase if I didn't put my all into it. That's just something I won't do. I'd rather somebody look at my piece and not like it as opposed to look at it and not like it because I know damn well that I finished it to the extent that I did just because I wanted to get it done for a deadline just to make money off of it. That's just something I couldn't really do. Another thing is I've been seeing so many angel numbers. For example, right now it's literally 444. So I've been seeing a lot of angel numbers like that recently. Sometimes when I look at the clock, it's 1010, it's 1111, it's 1212, it's 1234, it's so many different numbers that I'm seeing. And honestly, for a long time, I, I noticed it, but I didn't really know what they meant. And lately, I've been finding myself looking more and more into what these repetitive numbers mean. And turns out that they're seen as angel numbers, and angel numbers mean that your angels are communicating with you and sending you a message. Literally, I just googled it. Of course, I know there's going to be some people who are going to be like, well, I don't believe that, and that's fine. You don't have to, but for me, seeing these numbers makes me have faith. I think it's so, it's so easy to not see something with a physical eye and think that because it's not there, it's not happening. For example, your bank account may be in the negatives, and you may be working on your brand and building it, and because things aren't selling right now, you may think, what's the point of even trying this? You may think of getting another retail job. You may think of doing something you don't want to do, but just doing it because it's easy or it's more reasonable, and I think that's where a lot of us fall. I think that's where a lot of us neglect to follow our dreams because following our dreams isn't easy. It's never going to be easy. The things that are challenging, like the things that pursuing your dreams just brings on a bunch of challenges that you're never really going to be prepared for and you're never going to see coming. And I think that's why a lot of us kind of don't follow our dreams because when you don't have a house to live in or when you're homeless or when you're couch hopping between your friends and family, there's probably going to be people looking at you like, why didn't you get a retail job? Why didn't you do something else? But in those moments, that's when you have to have faith. And when I'm working on my artwork and I see those angel numbers, that is just a reassurance that everything I'm doing is going to work out. I think it's very important to recognize the signs that the universe is giving you. I know sometimes pursuing our dreams or whatever our dreams may have may look or sound crazy to some family members or friends and I think it's important to just have faith in yourself, recognize the signs that the universe is showing you to become a better version of yourself and just keep going at it. Another change I've been making is to stop prioritizing the opinions and the advice from family members and loved ones. I think you'll know if you kind of fall under this category, but I have a tendency to respect the opinion of loved ones and family members and friends so much that sometimes it becomes difficult for me to really recognize if I'm doing something because it genuinely feels right to me or if I'm doing it because somebody I love and value in my life told me to do it. And recently there came a point in my life when I realized I just didn't want to live like that anymore. There were changes happening in my life that didn't necessarily make sense to me, but at the same time I knew that I had to go with my gut instinct. I knew that I had to do what came natural to me and stop turning to the people around me and start turning to myself. I had to build faith in myself and I had to build trust in myself and through doing this I've become so much stronger and I've I've learned so much about myself and it's teaching me 
so much about the way that I am and how to just love and take care of myself. I think when you have strong-minded people in your life, it's very easy to kind of just listen to them because you know at the end of the day, they're always saying something in your best interest. But the problem with that is, although it may be in your best interest, it's also from their point of view, meaning that in their life, that's the way they would have done it. But what about you? What about the way you would have done it? What about the way that comes more natural to you? And that's why I've been taking the time to really just step back from everything and everyone and just build that faith and that trust within myself. I've also been taking the time to unlearn toxic behaviors. And this is one of those things where it takes a lot of work to even recognize that it's a toxic behavior and kind of decide if you want to change it or not. So I've been looking back at a couple things in my life and I've been thinking about the way that I think about things and I've been thinking about is this way of thinking and doing things healthy and is it helping me or is it hurting me? For example, I don't really like talking about my birthday. I've never been the type to really share it with people. Like I've never really said, hey, this is my birthday or hey, um, this is what I want to do for my birthday. And I had to kind of think about where did that come from? Why do I not care to share it? Because there are people in my life, like there are friends in my life who when it's their birthday, it's not just a day, it's a month or it's a weekend. Like people celebrate their birthday. And I think for everybody, they'll figure out the way they want to celebrate it and the way that's most natural for them. And those people that celebrate for a weekend or a month, God bless you because you should be celebrating. Like celebrate your life, celebrate the fact that you're here, celebrate the fact that you're a blessing to this earth. Like go fam, take care of yourself, do what you gotta do. (laughs) But for me, I've always been the type of person who kind of likes to be to themselves and even now I'm still kind of dissecting like why do I not really care to mention that it's my birthday and it's contradicting because it's like even going on Facebook on my birthday like when everybody that you usually don't even talk to on a regular basis like comments like happy birthday like I I love that. That's a blessing. And I appreciate the time that people take to do that. And even if they don't do that, like, that's fine too, because you have a life and you have stuff you need to do. But I think the reason why I don't really mention my birthday is because I think I've seen the drama that comes from it. And when I say that, I mean, I've seen the drama that comes from when friends say it's their birthday and they want things done a certain way and when it's not done that way, the problems that it causes in that friend group and I don't want drama on my birthday, you know? I I kind of want to just do what I want to do, but at the same time, I don't want to have to feel like if I don't include a specific person in this event that they're going to take it in some disrespectful way. I think when it comes to birthdays, I've always kind of seen it associated with either like some miscommunication in a friend group that causes a bigger issue than it really needs to be, or a friend that wasn't included feeling so left out that they're starting to question if they even were a friend to you. And I think even in the way that my birthday has been celebrated at home, Like, it's always been with a cake. I always get a cake, and I always get, like, some type of present, but I feel like, I don't know, it's always been normal. (laughs) Like, I don't know how else to describe it. It's, It's always been normal, and I don't think that that's an issue, but I think that the experiences, like, the bad experiences that I've had with witnessing other people going through on their birthday has kind of turned me off to even thinking about even doing something bigger or more special for my birthday and it made me realize that that's something I want to change and the reason why I want to change that is because being alive is a blessing 
the fact that I even have the opportunity to pursue my dreams and I'm physically on the earth right now and the fact that I can even spread the messages that I can to you guys and even talk like that within itself is such a big blessing and I think it's important for for me to celebrate myself. I think it's easy to, you know, look for approval from others. I think it's easy to kind of have people always tell you that they love you and have people be there for you, but I think all of that can kind of fall to the background if you don't know how to love yourself, if you don't know how to celebrate yourself. I think not recognizing my birthday as a blessing or recognizing my birthday as much as other people do has kind of put like a lock on the blessings I'm allowing in my life because if I don't see myself as being worthy enough to experience something in a specific way, then the universe can't offer me something more because I've never put myself in a position to get more. And when I say this, like, I'm not saying on my birthday I'm sad. I'm not saying that on my birthday I get upset or anything. I'm just saying on my birthday, like, I'm chilling at home. Like, I'm on the bed and I'm having, like, sparkling apple cider. Like, I'm not doing anything crazy, but I feel like that's been my truth for a very long time. And at the same time, I don't really say to anybody that it's my birthday. And if they know, they know. And if they don't, they don't. <laughs> but, um... I think that's something I want to confront. I think that I should not to really brag about it. Like, <laughs> I don't mean that I should like run into a building and be like, it's my birthday. <laughs> but I do think to an extent, like if, if I'm hanging out with somebody and I want to share that with them, I should, and I shouldn't be second guessing it. And that's something I want to change. I want to celebrate myself more. I want to learn how to love myself. Yeah, this is definitely one of those things where it's not easy. You definitely have to be aware of the way that you're thinking and consciously assessing if the thought process that you've been having is really helping you or hurting you. I think once you take the time to really think about it and think it through, you'll be able to be like, hmm, I've been thinking this way for my entire life. Has this brought me good things in my life or bad things? Does this bring me anxiety? Does this bring me pain? And once you're able to realize that, you're able to put the work in and really become a better version of yourself. And just to conquer what I was saying, my birthday is February 4th. I'm sharing this because I'm trying to conquer my weird tendency to not feel like sharing it. I don't know, I'm working on it. And the last thing, I've shared this several times, but I'm going to share it again because maybe the next time I share it is the time it'll really sink in or it'll really resonate with someone. But every day when I wake up, I say something I'm grateful for. So the point of doing that is to start your day on a positive note because when you wake up in the morning, like that's your opportunity to really set the tone for the day and really set what type of energy you're really trying to attract for the rest of the day. So every day when I wake up, sometimes even before I open my eyes, I'll say what I'm grateful for in my life. It can be something like, I'm grateful for the house I live in. I'm grateful for the food that I have downstairs to eat when I'm hungry. I'm grateful for the fact that I even have this camera to record to put a video on YouTube. Things like that. So the point of doing that, or at least what I've realized in terms of the changes that have happened. So I started doing that in August. So since August up until now, every day when I wake up, the first thing I do is I say something that I'm grateful for and I say it in my head. So I've realized that since I've been doing that, I don't think about the things that have annoyed me either the day before or a couple days ago or whatever as much. Sure, like there may be days where I have slip ups and I'll think about in the morning what may have irritated me that have happened that has happened recently in my life. But for the most part, when I wake up in the morning, I say what I'm grateful for and then I'll go to the bathroom, I'll make breakfast and then I don't touch my phone in terms of like social media. Maybe I'll check the time or turn off my alarm, but I don't 
check social media until after I've eaten my breakfast. So for me, TV is YouTube. <laughs> like I go straight to YouTube whenever I um like wake up in the morning. I don't go to, I don't use Netflix as much. So when I'm eating, I'll watch like a YouTuber that's positive or I'll watch a YouTube video that is something that um I watch a YouTube video that actually interests me, that doesn't make me feel bad or anything. And I think it's also important to recognize when you're eating what you're watching because I definitely wholeheartedly believe that when you're eating something, your ability or your body's ability to absorb food or absorb the nutrients in the food is going to depend on what state you're eating your food in. Now, let's really think about the fact that the news comes on while people are eating. The news is coming on in the morning when people are eating. The news is coming on in the afternoon when people are eating lunch and then at dinner time. And the problem I see with that is what does the, like, like think about what the news makes you do. The news makes you go, oh my God, did that really happen? Now think about that energy. <laughs> Let's really think about that energy. Think about the fact that when you're eating, you're feeding your body nutrients. When you want to absorb things that are essential for your health and essential for you, you're watching something. You're watching something that brings you pain, anxiety, makes you sad. Like, I think it's so important to pay attention to what you're watching when you're eating and also just pay attention to what you're doing when you're eating. I think it's very important to put yourself in a space in which you are at peace when you're eating so that your body can actually absorb the nutrients and the minerals and everything that it really needs. So when I get up in the morning, even though I'll watch YouTube and not the TV or something, I think it's important for me to specifically make sure that I'm watching things that bring me peace and love and enlightenment. So literally, as I'm absorbing the nutrients in my food, I'm absorbing this energy that I want to continue to exist in my life. And that's why it's so important for me to also not even go on social media. Um, I make it a point to follow only pages that inspire me and make me feel good and motivate me and keep me going but at the same time I think it's very important to make sure that I'm giving those first couple of hours of my day to myself and nobody else and I may be there commenting and spreading love and spreading light and and peace but I think it's so important to give those first couple of hours to myself because I deserve it and after that, I'll get into social media. Anyway, that's it for today's video. I hope that these tips were helpful and I hope that it kind of gave you guys a couple ideas on mindset changes you can make and how to just live better, live healthier, live stronger. Bless up and until next time, sending out much peace, love, and enlightenment. Bye guys. <laughs>